Support for Flying Valiant Builds is brought to you by First and 64th Customs, Video Geek Productions, The Brian Smith YouTube Channel, Matchbox Mark, Jonathan Vonish, and Donald Rashik. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you're going to have tacos from a taco truck, then you better be ready for dessert from an ice cream truck. Hey there, folks. Chuck here, and we are back with part two of my food truck extravaganza, celebrating two of my earliest and most engaged viewers, River and Journey. We did Journey's truck a little while ago, and you can watch that in the link up in the right-hand corner. And that explains a little bit about where we got to where we are right now. If you don't want to go back and watch that video, the quick wrap up is that River and Journey are the daughters of my dear friends Christian and Ashley and Christian has a YouTube channel of his own that was originally called Street Food and now it's called Christian Has Ideas and both sets of content are excellent and I highly recommend them. You can check them out in the link in the description below. But we're talking mostly about street food right now because that was the main focus of his channel for a very long time and his daughters asked me to do a food truck for them. And I thought, it's tough for two kids to share one tiny car. So why not do two? Why not indeed? So here we are. Like with Journey's food truck, I asked Christian to help me with some ideas. And we'll talk about those ideas in the breakdown. He said River was a big fan of ice cream. And I can't think of a better way to wrap up a day eating it on the street than stopping by the local ice cream truck. So that's where we're going. He said her favorite color was blue, so we're gonna make it blue. Like with Journey, we're gonna give River a job, and because they're a little concerned about how dirty my vehicles are, we're gonna go with weathered but workable on this build. Ready? Punch that subscribe button. Let's boogie. There was a comically small piece of plastic for the glass in this vehicle, so I almost dropped it several times giving it the pledge floor gloss tip, but a dip, a dab, and some drying, and it was on its way. We're going to start with the chassis and work our way up with this build. I decided that the wheels that Matchbox put on this truck were perfect for the vehicle. So unlike most of my builds, I decided to just keep them as part of the chassis and paint the whole thing as one. After a gray primer coat, I added some black for dark shadow because I knew I was going to lighten things up significantly on the bottom of this one. And I actually went with a tan color for the underside with a little touch of orange rust here and there. On a lot of these vehicles, you end up with a lot of lighter city dirt underneath them. So I decided the chassis would be on the lighter side and then I'd work the shadows in later. And actually, by the time I was done with the airbrush, I felt like the tires were almost perfect for a set of really weather beaten used tires, but we'll get back to them in a minute. I used some Wraith's Bone White to do the bumpers. I like how on many vintage utilitarian vehicles, they would opt for painted trim instead of chrome trim. So I went that way with this one and gave it race bone white on a lot of the accents that would normally be chrome on a flashier vehicle, including the wheels, the bumpers, and the, again, I can't stress enough how much I felt like these wheels were perfect for this vehicle. And that really comes into play once you see the Stuart Simple Mirror paint for the hubcaps on top of the off-white of the race bone for the wheels. Once that had dried, I used a little Tamiya panel liner to bring out the shadows, and that's when the wheels really started to come to life. I had to be really careful with this and make sure I didn't get any of the panel liner on the Stuart Simple because it is oil-based and the Tamiya panel liner will reactivate it. So if you're using the two together, be very careful. I tend to put an acrylic base down and then the Stuart Simple mirror paint on top of it if I think I'm going to use the panel liner, and that seems to do a better job of holding things in place. And that's a good way to have a protective barrier around the edges, especially if you leave just a little bit of gap between the acrylic silver and the mirror paint. It's not noticeable to the naked eye, but it will prevent any run up that might happen. I felt like the wheels and tires could use a little help, so I added some null oil once everything dried to give it a more uniform wash look over everything, over the wheels and tires. And because it's acrylic base, it does not reactivate the Stuart Simple and gives it just a fine layer of grime. It's amazing how much lighter the tires got after everything dried. But here I am going through the chassis with the Tamiya panel liner again to dry out the shadows. And then a sepia wash over everything. 
I'm becoming a bigger fan of the sepia wash than I am of the Nuln oil, just as a excellent shader. And you'll see where it really comes into play later in the build. I use some warm gray from Vallejo to do the exhaust pipe and the drive shaft, some orange rust for the engine, followed by some Nuln oil to wash it down, and some additional Nuln oil over everything else. Now let's get to that interior. I sprayed the interior down with an orange rust base because I am in Gainesville and if you're doing blue, you gotta have some orange. Go Gators. I chose a light khaki for the seat, again for contrast, and to look like the most utilitarian of vinyl upholsteries. I opted to not do 3D printed steering wheels in these because the steering wheels are basically like pillars of plastic in the interior and I would basically have to rebuild the entire front seat if I were to chop that area out. So they are an exception to my no nubs in my builds rule. Unlike Journey's truck, I wanted the cabinet doors to have a more matte feel. So I went with warm gray on the cabinet doors for the ice cream truck and some blackened steel for the sink area with some Stuart simple accents on the pieces that would be chrome like the sink faucet, the front cooler, and whatever that thing is on the back counter. The floor was done in black and steel to look like worn metal, and all the cabinets got chrome handles. I used the AK Interactive Intense Colors to color in little areas to look like treat packets or condiments or whatever would be on that display rack next to the coolers. And like Journey's truck, I went with the Tamiya panel liner around all of the nooks and crannies and then cleaned everything up with a cotton swab. Then followed that with a sepia wash to mute the colors down a shade or two. This also did a great job of adding some modulation to the seat. All right, time to get to the river figure. Again, this was 3D printed on my new 3D printer. It's one of the first jobs that I had that actually turned out well, so that was exciting. It's AK Interactive Gray Primer and some fresh cut timber for the skin tone, race bone white for the apron and the bandana, and some very Gainesvillian orange and blue from AK Interactive's Intense Colors for the clothing. A little touch up on the face and some red shoes because why not also i did heavy khaki for the hair like on the journey figure and painted the base a black and steel so it would blend in with the rest of the floor a couple of dots for eyes and some stuart simple mirror paint for the buttons and that sepia wash really bringing everything together it's amazing the difference a little shading can do all right time for journey to take her spot in the ice cream truck and that means it's time to get to the body. All right, so this one's a little different because the body is plastic on this one. There were earlier versions of this ice cream truck where the front of the truck was die-cast metal and the back of it was plastic. And I actually prefer this one because the panel gaps are a little more realistic. The problem, of course, comes with removing the tampos before paint. These are pretty thickly applied textured decals that you would really have to lay on some thick primer to cover up. So they have to come off before you add paint. Of course, you can't throw it in your regular paint stripper because it would just dissolve the entire body. So you have to get creative. One way that you can remove the tampos is to rub the body with sugar. I have been able to do this before on a small scale on a much older casting, but it did not work so well with this one. I did a trick that you usually do on the metal body cars, and that's to take a dry erase marker and rub it all over the tampos. And the reason why this works is because tampos dissolve in acetone, and there's a very small amount of acetone in a dry erase marker, and that's what helps it dry. But it's not so much acetone that it immediately dissolves the plastic like it would if you put nail polish remover on the plastic. So. As long as you work quickly and rub it on and immediately rub it back off again, you can dissolve the tampo without doing damage to the plant. It's also a really good way to kill a dry erase marker. That's why I switched to another one. As you can see, it gradually worked its magic. And after dealing with a few of the more obnoxious mold marks, it was off to paint. I tried to get clever here and do the highlights and lowlights under the paint by starting with a light primer and adding black paint around the areas that I wanted there to be more shadow. And I think if I had used a lighter color or used a thinner coat of paint, it would have shown through. But unfortunately, it didn't really show up. It did work a lot better on a previous build, which you can see by clicking up here in the right-hand corner. This is a really fun color blue. It, it's an intense sky blue from AK Interactive that I thinned to use in an airbrush. And it's pretty close to Flying Valiant blue. And I thought it would be a color that River would like. Again, it was time to do that off-white trim around all of the different parts of the vehicle that would be normally metallic. Some of the areas went on better than others, and I just scraped the excess paint off with a toothpick later. 
One of the details I like about this casting is the partially exposed roll-down doors on either side. And then it was time for the trim. I used tarnished steel as a base here. Again, because I knew I was going to be using panel liner, I wanted to have an acrylic metallic base and then paint down right to the edge of it with the Stuart Simple Paint. The ice cream cone was fresh cut timber. This is a MIG filter that's blue for gray. And I thought I would see what would happen if you put it over blue. And I thought it gave a nice, very subtle toning to the entire body. Once that was dry, I took the AK Interactive Rain Marks and Dust pencil and rubbed it all over the top after dipping it in water and then stippled the whole thing to add some fading and some mildewy effects to the top of the truck. This is the mirror paint getting applied to all of the different metallic areas that I wanted to have an extra shine to it. And some acrylic stoplight red, amber, and metallic medium for the backup lights. When it was time for the Tamiya panel liner. Again, I think I would have done better to do dark gray instead of black, but it all cleaned up all right. Use a very lightly dampened cotton swab with some paint thinner to tone everything down. And, and while everything was still a little wet, I swiped over everything with a makeup brush to add some very light streaking and, and make sure nothing sat too heavily on the body of the truck. Then it was decal time. These are all pieces of clip art I found online and I made the Rivers Refreshment sign in Photoshop. This is metallic medium over race bone white for the ice cream cones, just to add a little sparkle. I did the same to the headlights as well. And because River and Journey have spent a majority of their lives living in China, and have found themselves living in my home state, I gave them each a personalized Florida license plate to make them feel welcome. Once all the decals were applied, I gave the entire vehicle a satin varnish, and it was time to snap everything together and do some final details. This is Tamiya Weathering Powder's soot, just to add some dirt and grime in spots, as well as just a little gun metal to show some paint wear through. I also very lightly stippled on some AK Interactive Decay Deposits on the roof of the truck to create the illusion of mildew buildup, like you get on an ice cream truck in Florida that isn't washed every week. I then went around the vehicle with some light rust just to give a few accents of the wear and tear that, that a vintage ice cream truck would pick up over the years. I used MIG rain marks on the windshield to create exactly what it sounds like, and then wipe the wiper patterns clean with a cotton swab, and then add some city dirt pigment, also from AK Interactive. And unfortunately, the footage didn't turn out. I went over all of the lenses with AK Interactive wet effects to create a glass-like finish on the lenses and the signage. Finally, it was time for the decal and the number, and time to get this ice cream truck off to its new owner. But before that, let's take one last look at what we started from, the Matchbox ice cream truck, which, while well, I'm pretty sure it's a fantasy casting, is one of the better ones out there. I love the old school grill on the front of this one, and the molded ice cream effects on the top. Did not love that it was plastic and not die cast, but once I was done with it, I don't think it was that noticeable. So let's see where we ended up. Now we have a special customized, vintage, weathered, but still workable ice cream truck, piloted by the capable hands of our good friend River. River is one of those kids that, like my own daughter Tracy, has never met a stranger, and I'm pretty sure Tracy wants to be River when she grows up. And that's not a bad thing. River and her dad just took a really fun journey through Gatlinburg for her 10th birthday celebration, and that video is a lot of fun. I recommend you check it out. You can see it right up here and in the description below. As always, I want to thank my patrons. You saw the Bandit level presenting sponsors at the beginning, but this show wouldn't be anywhere without all my patrons. So I also want to give my heartfelt thanks to my other patrons. At the Rockford level, we got Mid Island Custom Diecast, Maple Leaf Customs, Double B's Customs, Mr. Zanzibar 91, Gary Tasker, and Aunt Tracy. Also, my Douglas level patrons, the Good Bad Better podcast, Jordan Kleinen, Curtis Crafts, Jim Silva, and Kamikaze Customs. Thank you all for keeping the lights on. If you want to help them help me, you can always do that over at flyingvaliant.com. I would really appreciate it. And it's your chance to get special access to me, opportunity to get everything from discounts on commissions to free customs. So check it out at flyingvaliant.com. Oh yeah, almost forgot. This video's shout out is for One Euro Diecast. Alessandro has a great channel, and in my opinion, it is severely underrated as far as not having nearly enough subscribers. The hook for his channel is that he takes die casts that he finds for one euro or less in the used market and gives them a life of their own. And he's been doing amazing stuff from 
customs to restorations to recently some really cool weatherings. I see you, Alessandro. Stay in your lane. Just kidding. Well, that's it for me here for this episode. I'm going to wrap things up so I can get these two trucks packed up and on their way to their new home. It's going to be a fun weekend and there's going to be a lot of cool stuff for me to share. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and if you like, we share it with your friends. That's how this channel's grown and that's one of the most meaningful ways you can support what I do. Once again, I want to thank River and Journey for inspiring these builds. I hope that you enjoy them. It was a lot of fun and it was a huge challenge. And we are so grateful that our families are friends. To the rest of you, as always, I want to thank you for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags. Bye.